And we're back with more Echo. Whoa, whoa. Bye. All right. When we last left off, the gang just got the heck out of Brian's trailer. And now they're trying to find Carl one last time. God. One last time. Come on. Let's go freaking find Carl. <laughs> All right. Let's go oh. for it. I can feel the stitches in my leg. Even though I pulled out the little bits of line a half hour ago. Oh, my controller decided to already turn off. I can't hear this because this is gross. Uh, I mean, that was already it. That's all. Despite living here a vast majority of my life, even I had trouble figuring out where the hell we were. As I walk, the, throb the sting throbs with every step. I close my eyes and realize how exhausted I really am. Running off extreme adrenaline for a day it will take the wind out of you. Soul mortal blows to the head and torture, apparently. I keep imagining what when I keep imagining that when I open my eyes, I'll be in my back in my dorm. I'll sit up from bed and Vince will be tapping away at his laptop on the other side of the room. I'll tell him I had a fucked up dream and he'd tell me in that too cool for school tone to blog about it. The rhythmic tapping was at first really annoying, but now it's kind of like a white noise machine. It helps me sleep for some weird reason. Maybe because it feels like I'm not so alone. Chase. I inhale sharply, nearly tripping over a clump of weeds. Jenna places a precautionary arm out in front of me before easing back when she sees I've got my balance again. You still with us? She looks me up and down, as if looking for signs that I'm turning into another Leo situation. Said Wolf is still with us, ambling along like he can't even feel that half his leg was stitched to mine less than half an hour ago. Ugh. I look back to her, nodding. Yeah. Exhausted, but that's to be expected, I guess. Hmm. Ordinarily, I'd love a quiet walk with you at night, though considering the circumstances. She pauses, looking over her shoulder. Well, could be worse. Never you say a... that. <laughs> <laughs> you had a guardian angel. She noticeably stiffens as I bring up the topic of what just happened. I'm trying not to think about it. None of gone around to check out where Brian was dragged. In fact, we made a beeline in the opposite direction. Ordinarily, the lights of the town would guide us to where to go. But everything's dark. The moon our only real source of light. And even that is partially obscured. The productive thing to do is to just think ahead right now. We'll come into town along the back roads, get to the motel, and take your car. I give her a firm with a thumbs up. Micah, meanwhile, is clutching his knife tight. It reminds me of how he was with the wrench earlier, when he was worried about Leo attacking him. Now the two walk nearly side by side. Everyone but Leo is rattled, that's for sure. I can tell if it's supposed hysteria's fault or just a completely rational reaction to all the shit that's happened today. Micah's usually arrogant and gruff demeanor is replaced by a more timid posture, the bat rubbing his neck like he can't believe he's alive. I try to think of something to say as he turns to face me. Micah, uh... I'm sorry about Keith. Yeah. He responds simply, sucking his lower lip for a moment before one of his fangs, be <clears throat> uh, between one of his fangs before speaking again. Still not sure exactly what happened, but now I have a more definitive idea. He looks ahead again, shifting the topic. I had a dream about it, you know. No, about you. Oh, sorry. I had a dream about you, you know? I 
actually don't remember this. That's I do. Of... Okay, well, this is fascinating, because that means that both Daxon and Micah dreamt about Chase in that uh, in the routes that they're in. That's interesting. I don't remember Daxon having a Oh, I remember, because it was just a dream of Daxon just wanting to really rip Chase's throat out for some reason. Uh -huh. Forgot about that. I'm curious about Micah's dream now, because I don't remember Micah's dream. Oh? After we spoke, I got a little bit of sleep, but what I did, what I did dream stuck out up to me. I got to change to a oh, different okay. monitor because my know. head is trying to stretch and it's like I'm having to speak to the mic and then look in the other direction. It's not working. Okay. You're holding me underwater, drowning me. A cold chill creeps along my spine. Juno looks over. Raising her brow curiously at the at the bat, Leo stares straight ahead, unfazed. That's weird. Why are you telling me this? Micah waves his hand, dismissing my question as he continues. You were holding me underwater, and it was fucking terrifying because I couldn't breathe. Your hands around my throat felt exactly like that noose did. The way they bristled and cut into my neck. He points to the mad fur around his throat. The pinkish raw rubbed flesh, visible even in the dark. But talking emotionally and shit, I started feeling thankful. Thankful that I was killing you? That's rather macabre. The bad nods. Seemingly un well, seemingly well aware of how strange this sounds. You remember this now, Alan? Yeah, no, I fully remember this now. <laughs> Sorry. Yet he doesn't relent, noting how exceptionally strange everything else has been really lately. I'd be willing to take anything at face value at this point. Hmm. Like you were freeing me, really fucked up suicidal shit. When I was up in that noose, though, I didn't want to die. So that part of me didn't translate. So that part didn't translate. Honestly, surprised I didn't piss and shit myself. Did you guys? Jim stares blankly at him. Mm, no. I did not. No. Leo, of course, is silent. I think I almost left town a couple of days ago. You've never gotten caught up in this mess. Well, why did you just really disappear the first time? Back in 2008. Micah fiddles with something in his pocket, taking it out and peering it over. Also, I want to point out something about it being 2008. Do you guys remember mm -hmm. what takes place in 2008? Nope. Any guesses? I gotta guess. Well, I mean, you, well, should you know, know what Harry. happened. <laughs> it's something that we actually got oh, to see. Oh, was it Sydney dying? No, that's 2003. Damn it. We got know, to play in 2008 back in Route 65. Oh. Okay, I was wondering if it was like around the time they were like in high school or something. Yeah, I remember like they like the characters are roughly mine and Sam's age, um, where Chase and uh, Carl are a year below Sam and I. Jenna would actually be in my year. And then um, Leo I think is actually DJ's age if I'm remembering age is right. What year did uh, Leo graduate? Two years before Chase. Um, so that'd be a year above Jenna. Okay. So actually I might be misremembering that. that. I do know then that Leo is definitely in your grade unfortunately Hannah. Um, let's see if it's, you said it was a year before Jenna? Yes, because Jenna would have been in my grade, and I graduated okay. 2011, so Jenna would have. Uh, Chase and Carl graduated 2012, so Leo graduated 2010. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, Leo would have been in the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, uh, TJ, I think he would be, uh, 2014 graduate, yeah. That would be Morgan's then. Ah. 
Which also makes sense because they're in 2015. He's in his first year of college. So yeah, no, that checks out. I can't quite make out what it is. Something plastic and thick. A lot of reasons. My folks turned on me after finding out about some shit one night. Came home to find my room torn up, all my belongings outside. My mom the, wouldn't stop fucking bawling, screeching uh, like a dying chicken at me. I, I'll believe that one for you, Harry. Oh, okay. No. My dad, meanwhile, had his old police baton. Kept coming at me with it whenever I tried to come back inside. Kept screaming to let me in and apologizing for every little screw up that I think I could think uh, that I could think of. None of it worked. Tried to sleep on the porch, but my dad came out and started kicking me in the back till I left. Shit, the grimaces. That's awful. Leo looks back over his shoulder, slowing his pace some to match ours. I can tell he's at least half listening now. No longer is spaced out. Keith was gone, and, uh... I didn't have anywhere else to go. Wasn't too popular, as I recall. Even with Heather, Clint, and Jeremy, they had their own problems. Hold on one second. Go shake him. Shake him for us, Hannah. Tell me he's a bad boy. Tell him that we think that he's a Leo apologist. Here it comes. About damn time. It's not my fault, whatever it is. Oh, it definitely is it's your always, fault. It's always your fault. Whack. Yeah. So, basically, they're looking for Carl, and uh, Micah just told him about some stuff that happened to him um, back back in 2008. Are they... Are Leo and Micah being like... Is Leo, what? like, listening? To someone yeah. Talk? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. No, Micah. I thought he existed. Micah really effectively crazy. talked about how he was uh, kicked out of his family, and he was like, "You should have said something." <laughs> Suffering in yeah. silence is never good. I, I mean, I'll point out like they do say. Uh, well, Micah says, "Yeah, my parents found something out, and then they." kicked me out, said I was like a monster and a horrible person, uh, not to come back. I tried, I begged to did come back say, in. Dad was gonna beat me with a police baton. Uh, when uh, I then slept on the porch, my dad opened the door to kick me in the back as much as he could, and I just had Holy to shit. basically run away from town, because Keith wasn't yeah, even just, around anymore for me to I mean, to. I mean, an easier way to do this, Al, would just be like, roll back with the scroll wheel and let DJ I mean, read a I bit. I think I... I think I yeah, he did a good job. Up, he summed it up pretty good. Um... Yeah, I think the only other thing is Micah also told uh, Chase about a dream that he had where uh, Chase was actually um, choking him underwater. Drowning. Like, yeah, drowning there's him. that. Yeah. Yeah, he he told us about that earlier. Yeah, but the drowning other thing about is the not it is sexy that version of choking. The other thing about that is then Micah says in his dream he felt thankful that Chase was killing him. Oh lord. Like like a suicide. Like a suicide sort of thing? No, it was more that he was felt like he was being freed from something. Freed. Oh, God. Okay. Oh. Well, and with that... Oh. Okay, Seb, you oh. might be picking up um, what Micah is oddly referring to, potentially. Uh, I think... Yeah. I, might, yeah. I might also... I might also potentially... Why understand. is he thankful to Chase? For um, it's him. not Micah. It's, uh, well, or at least speculation i think it's whoever i mean here i'm gonna cut back in here so we're talking about uh micah's dream again now that dj's here um so hannah can you explain your theory about micah's dream now or say that again you're we're the, 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 kind of the, cutting in and out yeah i am well not i'm not sure if it's us if it's if it's us or you probably it's just us it's not you it's us all right so what i was saying was that um I'd like to hear your theory now that we're back in the recording because I was going to cut everything that was in between. Okay. Um, my theory is that he's 
potentially dreaming about uh, he's dreaming from the perspective of uh, what's his name Uh, Sydney. Sydney. Sydney and Sydney is feeling relief because he was possessed by the entity that is potentially Sam that's my theory Hmm. That is an interesting theory. All right. Should I set my line? Yep. <laughs> Should have told me. The words catch Micah by surprise. The wolf staring at him from across the shrubbery. You must get them a shrubbery. Hey. I know we just survived a near-death experience together... But no need to get to be getting all retroactively sappy. We turn a small bend around a sandy embankment, some old car parts scattered in the underbrush. The moon is finally visible from behind Echo Canyon, and I can make out what Mike is carrying. Brian's cell phone. I guess he's gonna try and take that in as evidence. As he moves to push it back in his pocket, it slips and clatters against a rock beneath him. Nah, fuck. I'll get it. Leo bends down, taking hold of the phone. The screen is shattered, and a few slivers of glass fall to the ground. Damn it. Leo, the breaker of phones. (laughs) Uh, No, this was Micah this time. No, Leo's mere presence. Uh, Hi. (laughs) Leo doesn't budge. Still staring at the shattered device. Then, from beyond the distant shrub and scattered car parts, a mechanical roar. Lights flash before us, and Leo holds up his paw to shield himself from the light. It takes me a moment to realize their headlights, and the roar is the start of an old engine. It's a van, sitting right in front of us. And it's all too familiar. <laughs> 